About 10 days after 9-11, I went through the Pentagon and I saw Secretary Rumsfeld and, and Deputy Secretary Wolfowitz. I went downstairs just to say hello to some of the people on the Joint Staff who had used, used to work for me. And one of the generals called me and he said, sir, you got to come in. You got to come in and talk to me a second. I said, well, you're too busy. He said, no, no. He says, we've made the decision we're going to war with Iraq. This was on or about the 20th of September. I said, we're going to war with Iraq. Why? He said, I don't know. <laughs> he said, I guess they don't know what else to do. So uh, I said, well, did they find some information collect connecting Saddam to al-Qaeda? He said, no, no. He says, there's nothing new that way. They just made the decision to go to war with Iraq. He said, I guess it's like we don't know what to do about terrorists, but we've got a good military and we can take down governments. And um, he said, I guess if, if the only tool you have is a hammer, every problem has to look like a nail. So I came back to see him a few weeks later. And by that time, we were bombing in Afghanistan. I said, are we still going to war with Iraq? And he said, oh, it's worse than that. He said, he reached over on his desk. He picked up a piece of paper. He said, I just, he said, I just got this down from upstairs, meaning the Secretary of Defense's office today. And he said, this is a memo that describes how we're going to take out seven countries in five years, starting with Iraq and then Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and finishing off Iran. The truth is about the Middle East is, had there been no oil there, it would be like Africa. Nobody is threatening to intervene in Africa. The problem is the opposite. We keep asking for people to intervene and stop it. And there's, uh, there's no question that the presence of petroleum throughout the region has sparked great power involvement. Whether that was the specific motivation for the coup or not, I can't tell you. But, but there was definitely, there's always been this attitude that somehow we could intervene and use force in the region. Are you and your family prepared for a grid failure? Shield yourself from blackouts with a home backup system or portable off-grid solar energy system from Off-Grid Depot. Off-Grid Depot also supplies water pumps, DC appliances, and other products for off-the-grid living. Power your prep. Bug out vehicle, shelter, or remote location with a power system from Off-Grid Depot today. Hey everybody, I'm Christopher Green. You're tuning into AMTV Alternative Media Television. It's a beautiful Sunday in Arizona, February 22nd. We've got the Oscars tonight. Isn't that exciting? There'll be so many people tuning into the Oscars, but completely oblivious to what's going on overseas. Namely, a general, a former NATO commander, head of all of NATO, I believe it was the years 2007 through 2011 range, General Wesley Clark. You probably remember him. He had a very famous interview on Democracy Now! where he said that post the staged terror attacks of September 11, 2001, he got a memo allegedly from then Donald Rumsfeld, Secretary of Defense, that said that the United States federal government would be launching an aggressive invasion and attack of countries in the Middle East, namely Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, Sudan, the list went on and on. And he was flabbergasted by the list because he couldn't understand why we'd be attacking countries like Iraq and Afghanistan. You remember Bush's lie of WMDs, weapons of mass destruction, when the official bullshit narrative of September 11, 2001, which again, there's unanswered questions like Building 7 and no plane fragments at the Pentagon, etc. Couldn't believe we'd be attacking those countries when the official bullshit narrative was that it was mostly Saudi Arabian nationals on board the alleged planes during the September 11th, 2001 terror attack. Had nothing to do again with Iraq or Afghanistan. Is back in the news. Had an interview on CNN, the mainstream media bullshit media channel, where he said that ISIS was created by the U.S. and her allies. So you're in a little bit of a dilemma on that. We need to leave that kind of fuzzy on this, but we need the authorization to follow the leads, put the troops in and, and play this. Look, ISIS got started through funding from our friends and allies, because as people will tell you in the region, if you want somebody who will fight to the death against Hezbollah, you don't put out a recruiting poster and say, you know, sign up for us, or we're gonna make a better world. You go after zealots and you go after these religious fundamentalists. That's who fights Hezbollah. But, General, I'm hearing you it's on It's like a Frankenstein. 
I'm hearing you on keeping Syria fuzzy, but I mean, they've been very clear in wanting to destroy and dismantle ISIS. So that's not fuzzy to me at all. The question would be if they wipe out ISIS in Syria, which is the goal, then what with Bashar al-Assad? Yeah. There has to be a plan for that phase. Well, some things you can't exactly plan that clearly because you're dealing in the realm of politics. So part of it is, can you get the Russians to withdraw their support from Bashar Assad? How would you do that? Hmm. Well, you're dealing with the Russians in Ukraine right now, and they're not being helpful. No, they're in not. fact, from Putin's perspective, he probably sees it as a, the opposite play. He says that because the Americans need us to help on Iran, because they don't have a ground force in Syria, they're actually relying on us. Therefore, we can push Ukraine further and the Americans won't stop us because they're afraid they'll lose our cooperation elsewhere in the world. That's right, only more proof to the pudding. He must be tuning in to alternative media television. This is a valedictorian, a Rhodes Scholar. I believe he went to West Point saying it's the U.S. and her allies that created ISIS, ISIL, the Israeli Secret Intelligence Service, out of thin air as a smoke screen so we can go and fight these wars that the general didn't even understand post September 11th, 2001. Uh, again, this is just an utter lie. I did a video, our last video, asking what if, what if ISIS was just total bullshit? What if ISIL was a lie? It was a fabrication. It was the equivalent of George W. Bush's WMDs. What if? What if we were just being sold? Again, the smoke and mirrors campaign, we've seen it time and time again. Again, we, our government officials give us no reason to trust them at all. They lie to us continuously. We also had mayor, former New York mayor, Giuliani come out over the past few days, says that he doesn't know that President Barack Obama loves America. Yeah, that's right. He's not sure. Hmm. Does he love America? And a very controversial statement coming from a very well-respected figure. In fact, he's now getting death threats at his office, according to his secretaries. People want to kill him for questioning whether or not the president of the United States loves America. Newsflash for you, Mayor Giuliani. You're late to the party. You're only telling and saying what everyone else is thinking in America. This scumbag president doesn't love America. He hates it. He's a hijacker in chief. He's a Manchurian candidate. He's, of course, out to destroy it. It's why we can't allow Hillary Rodham Clinton uh, to become the next president, which will just be a tertiary campaign of the Obama administration. It's why it's so important that we provide a counter move to Hillary Clinton 2016. It's why I think Although you might have some disagreements, and I have my own personal disagreements, I've criticized them in the past, I think we should get behind people like Rand Paul, not just to audit the Fed, but to end the criminal Federal Reserve in America. Again, this is the same shenanigans we saw with the Bush era years, folks. This is the same bullshit we've seen before. The same lies. ISIS, created by, U by the U.S. and her allies, according to General Wesley Clark. I mean, this is amazing shit. This is a very well-respected general. He was the commander and head of all NATO forces, not just American, but NATO forces, saying that ISIS was created by her allies. You know, countries like Saudi Arabia that are in cahoots with the United States right now, not just to put pressure on U.S. fracking corporations, but to drive oil prices to zero, to put pressure on Vladimir Putin and Russia, and to bring Iran to the nuclear dealing table so that we can negotiate with them. Those same allies, those same people responsible for creating these groups to fight, allegedly, Hezbollah, to fight the other radical elements. You see, the United States does this time and time again. It's how we throw countries. It's how we overthrow places like Egypt. It's like how we murder people like Muammar leader Muammar Gaddafi in, in Libya. That's, that's how and why Gaddafi was killed. We instigate the radicals on the ground, the terrorists. The same thing we've seen in Ukraine, by the way. We instigate it. We arm these people. We help fuel the fire of this terrorism. We promote the beheadings of Coptic Christians, etc., on Libyan beaches. The United States government is responsible for this. You know, few people realize this. They think it just came out of thin air. Like, they'd never even heard of ISIS before up until six months ago. It's like, where did these guys come from? I thought Osama bin Laden was dead. I thought Al-Qaeda uh, had ended. I, I thought Obama had snuffed out the evildoer. It turns out to be total bullshit, according to a general, General Wesley Clark and anybody paying attention. Again, ISIS created by the CIA and Mossad. Far more likely the United States is responsible for creating and her allies creating this entity than anyone else. For It's just spawning out of nowhere, being created out of nowhere so conveniently it can be the new boogeyman that we fight countless wars in the Middle East. 
This isn't just a couple wars. This isn't the bullshit Iraq and Afghanistan we saw with George W. Bush, folks. This is the world event. This is the world war. This is how serious this all is. While people just tune into the Oscars tonight, yeah, will Birdman win the Oscars? Will that be the next indie film to win? Heard it's actually a good film. I've actually seen part of it. I'm trying to, I'm trying to finish it. It's probably pretty good art. But we have bigger issues at hand. You know, people more focused on Kim K and her accident that she got. And thank God she's, she's okay. You know, never wish any harm on anybody. Or when uh, Bruce Jenner will cut his dick off. That's a topic of discussion on TMZ. When will the Bruce, Brucey, cut his dick off? When will his schlong go? You know, maybe he'll give it to Kris Jenner or Hillary Clinton. I'm sure she's wanted a dick and balls for some time now. Very serious and very real issues. While the mainstream media dazes and confuses the populace, mainstream entertainment provides, uh, again, just an outlet so people aren't focused on the truth, not focused on what really matters. This is some hard-hitting shit, folks. General Wesley Clark accusing the U.S. and our allies for creating and fomenting ISIS, which we're now fighting a war against. Obama's ISIL fighting a multi-trillion, a continuation of a multi-trillion dollar war, and it gives the U.S. and our allies justification to continue and to fight these brand new wars, something that is escalating into a very serious world event. I'm Christopher Green. Get it out everywhere. Make it viral. Hard-hitting it in your face, and click the link below to support our sponsor.